Hello there, it's Arlene here from From Pennies to Plenty. I'm back today with another audio blog post, and this one is a question I get a lot. This is probably one of the most popular articles on my blog. So today I want to cover 19 places to get clothes to sell on Poshmark. When I first started selling on Poshmark in 2015, I began selling clothes from my own closet and I soon ran out of things to sell and turned to thrift stores to source more inventory. It's worked for me over the years because I sell in small quantities as a side hustle only. I realize though that a lot of sellers have grander goals and therefore need more inventory. In fact, I recently received this question from a seller, quote, I've started to sell on Poshmark and want to see if I can generate at least $1,000 a month to help with my son's college expenses. One of my questions is how do I get more inventory? And this is a good question because you're going to need enough of the right inventory to hit your sales goals. Whether you're a new seller or a seasoned one, it can be hard to find enough low cost, high quality items to flip for a profit month after month and year after year. Having alternative sources for obtaining inventory can make a huge difference to your profits. So where can you get this close? Well, first things to note, this post focuses on sourcing items allowed on Poshmark. That's clothes, shoes, accessories, and similar items. And this list is long, bear with me. I may have to split this into two parts, but it doesn't mention every source available. If you have other places to source items for reselling, I absolutely welcome your comments and input. Please do share. Now, before we go on, if you don't already have a Poshmark account, you can sign up with my code SFGIRL2015. That's SFGIRL2015. And you'll receive a free $10 bonus for signing up. Okay, let's get started. Now, the first place to get inventory is your own house and closet. This is the best place to start sourcing. I've read that most people only wear 20% of their wardrobe regularly. That's a lot of unworn clothes in people's closets. And if that's true for you, I think it may be true for me. Your closet is a great place to find items to sell. The best part about selling items like this, your old clothes, is that you can learn how Poshmark and other platforms work without investing any money into inventory. You're actually recouping money for items that you paid for, but no longer wear. Number two is thrift stores and outlets. Thrift stores are my favorite places to find items to resell. Prices tend to be low enough that you make a profit when you resell the right items. Now Goodwill in my area sells clothes for about $3.99 to $12.99. For a lot of people, that's kind of expensive. That's just how it is in my area. Things are a little bit more expensive. Some of it is worth purchasing for resale. Some of it, I would say a lot of it is not. Being successful at thrift shopping requires knowing what brands to look for. I started by shopping for a few brands that I knew were in demand, and I increased my brand awareness by looking up brands I came across when I shopped by browsing Poshmark to see what sold and taking note of what women talked about and what they wore. Goodwill outlets, AKA the bins. These are an even cheaper alternative to thrift stores. The items come out in giant bins and you have to sift through them to find the good stuff. A lot of people source clothes, shoes, toys, household goods, all kinds of things from the bin. The nice thing is that the clothing and the other items sell by the pound for ridiculously low prices. The Goodwill outlet closest to me sells items for about $1.79 a pound and cheaper than that when you buy more than 20 pounds. So I've purchased sweaters for approximately 50 cents each and even winter jackets for say $1.50. A lower price, lower cost per item means greater profits when they sell. You have to have a thick skin to shop at the outlets. Some outlets are filled with buyers who are very competitive to get the best items. You have to be willing to get a little dirty too because the bins can have dirty clothes and other unpleasant things. But if you do search and you're not afraid to get a little dirty, you may come across some great stuff that you can sell for a profit. Here's number three, 
curated secondhand shops. And these exist in many cities and towns. You might be familiar with some like Crossroads, Buffalo Exchange, and Plato's Closet. People bring their clothing to these stores to sell in exchange for cash or store credit. Employees inspect each item and accept only the ones they think will sell. Because these stores curate what they sell and these stores are for, for profit, their prices are higher than you'd find at a thrift store. I like these shops though because the items are typically higher quality and they're in better condition than thrift store items. You're more likely to find high-end brands, more unique items, and even luxury goods. The difficulty with this option is that you have to be more selective about what you buy to resell. Many items sell for about the same price as you'd find on Poshmark. So there's often no room to mark up the product and make a profit. And that's why it pays to know what brands sell for a lot on Poshmark and look for those at these stores because there's still good deals to be had. I found Louis Vuitton, Lily Pulitzer, and Lululemon. These are some of the brands I've found at Crossroads and I've been able to flip for more on Poshmark. One other thing that helps is to look at the half off rack and the half off items scattered throughout the store. I've found some great half priced items for myself and for resale. I know some stores also have periodic sidewalk sales. They'll discount everything really cheap and because they want to clear out their inventory so you can get really great stuff for just a few dollars. Another thing I've noticed about these kinds of shops is that sometimes some items don't sell well locally due to regional differences, but they sell well online because well, Poshmark is nationwide. For example, heavy winter gear is not as common where I live in California because the weather doesn't get that cold or it does but very seasonally. And these items can sit on the rack at a store for a long time, but the minute they're put up online, they sell pretty quickly. Here's number four, consignment shops. Consignment shops are similar to curated secondhand shops in that an employee inspects items that are brought in and selects only those likely to resell. The consignment store, it's a little bit different. Usually they display the item for a certain length of time, like one to three months. And if the item sells, the shop takes part of the sale as commission. 50% commission is normal. It's a bit high in my mind, but it is normal. And if it doesn't sell, they may lower the price of the item or just return the item to the original owner. Because items are closely inspected and they're chosen for their ability to resell, again, you're likely to come across better quality items and brands than you would at a thrift store. I tend to avoid the consignment shops in my area because they're pretty high priced. I wouldn't be able to sell the items for more and make a profit. Actually, many of the consignment stores in my area sell things for more than I would find on Poshmark, so there's just no possible way to make a profit there. But you may get lucky and find some consignment shops in your area that underprice items. One other thing to note, you should also be careful about buying designer goods that are frequently replicated. You can find really accurate counterfeit LV bags and other designer bags and shoes at consignment shops. Many consignment store owners and employees are not experts on authentication and may unknowingly sell counterfeit goods. They don't always mean to, but because they don't have the skill to authenticate these items, some may slip past. You may end up buying them and try to resell them and they are not authentic. So it pays to be very careful about what you buy and then also have those items authenticated on your own. Let's move on to number five. The fifth way to get inventory to sell on Poshmark is having your own consignment service. One of my favorite ways to source items is this way, providing consignment service to basically sell goods for others and then split the profit. Now, it might sound like a lot of work for less profit, but it's actually a great way to access more items and higher end items than you would otherwise. You can decide how you wanna run your business to fit with the time you have and your selling goals. For example, you might only sell designer or luxury goods that you know would fetch at least $100 each. 
that would make the few hours of obtaining the items, listing, cleaning, and shipping them worth it. Where can you promote your consignment service? Well, family and friends, social media, neighborhood message boards, local websites like Craigslist and Nextdoor, or on local Facebook groups. Let's move on to number six, family and friends. Family and friends are a great source of inventory too, because I've had several friends and family members eager to give me their things to sell once they learn that I sell online. Usually these people have accumulated lots of stuff over the years because they've lived in the same homes, they've raised their kids, and just accumulated lots of stuff. And they may like to shop, they may be moving, they may need to just cut down on how much is going with them when they move. Whatever the reason, they're very eager to get rid of a lot of their stuff and make a buck while at it. But they don't have the time or the willingness inclination, expertise, whatever, to do the work of selling. They're happy to let you sell for them and take a cut of the profit. Number seven, unbranded or private label items. Another way to source items is to order wholesale lots of either branded or unbranded clothing and sell them for more online. Now here's what unbranded is. That refers to these goods that are sold without a brand name. So when I see these clothes, they usually only have a size tag in them. And these can be sold at cheaper prices depending on the product because they don't have a brand name to drive up the price and drive up sales. The alternative to that is private label items. And those are items that are sold under the seller's created brand name. Now that would be like if I created a brand called From Pennies to Plenty and I started selling you candles with that branding. The benefit of private label is that it's marketable to your loyal followers and possibly you can list it at a higher price because of the perceived quality and benefits of the item. And it's possible that a same item can be sold both unbranded and under a private label. That does happen. You've probably already seen these products for sale on Poshmark. Sellers connect with wholesale distributors and order goods that they think will sell. It might be like certain styles of swimwear for the summer or boho sweaters for fall and winter. Let me go over some of the pros and cons of getting unbranded or private label items. Okay, the pros. First thing, low price per item. Because sellers order in bulk, the price per item is fairly low and they can make a profit selling them for more. The second pro is that you save time sourcing because you only have to research and order the goods. You could get 20, 50, 100, or even more items per order. That's much less time consuming than going to the thrift store and browsing rack after rack for the same amount of resellable items. Pro number three you get access to unique products. If you're lucky about sourcing or smart about sourcing, you can sell items that no one else is offering on that platform. That way, if someone wants it, well, they have to buy it from you. Another pro is that you can reorder popular products. If your goods are popular and sell out, hopefully you can just order again and restock your inventory. And you can develop develop a relationship with your wholesaler too when you're a repeat buyer. Okay, we've gone over the pros. Let's go over the cons of unbranded or private label items. And those are, the first is that you need more money invested up front. You have to have the money to buy the items wholesale. And depending on how much you buy to start, you could be deep in the hole until you sell those items. It could be hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. However much you put in, you're kind of stuck until you sell those items. Con number two, you have to know what's on trend and what will sell. You have to pick what people want to buy. Or again, you'll be stuck with lots of undesirable goods just sitting around in your house. Con number three, questionable quality products. A lot of these items come from China and the quality of the manufacturing can be poor, which is based on what I've read and what I've seen. So order a sample before you make a large purchase if you can. Con number five is that there's competition from other sellers. 
If you and a lot of other sellers are offering the same goods, the marketplace is going to be saturated with them. Then the only way to make a sale is to cut the price of your item. And competing on prices like that just leads to lower prices and then overall lower profits. And that can be really hard. Okay, let's move on to number eight. The eighth place to get inventory is at discount retail stores. Some sellers go to source is a discount store like Nordstrom Rack, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Last Call, Ross, those kinds of stores. These stores are known for selling new items for a fraction of retail. Honestly, I love these places. I like to go whenever I can. Not always to source, sometimes just to buy things for myself because I come up with such great stuff. Uh, where do these stores get their items? They may be last season's items, leftovers, or returned items from the retail stores. Some stores, like TJ Maxx, contract with brands to make goods to sell only at their discount stores. And the goods might be a little lower quality or slightly different in style, but they still have the brand name that people want to wear. I like sourcing at these kinds of stores because the items are guaranteed to be new and authentic. They may be returned, but there are no concerns about buying counterfeit goods. And these stores often have a mix of brands from cheap and unknown to high-end designer brands. If you're looking for nicer items, cheap enough to resell, the clearance rack is a great place to start. So you go during certain times of the year, like during the Clear the Rack sales event at Nordstrom Rack, and you'll find the items discounted even more. Other ways to optimize this source, one is to use the store's credit card and sign up for their frequent shopper rewards. Usually you get an incentive, like a discount on your next purchase for signing up for these things and you receive promotional offers throughout the year. You may even receive a gift certificate to spend at the store. Usually they do that for your birthday. And these promotions, they add up and you can find yourself paying a few dollars for nice items you know that will sell for more. At Nordstrom Rack, you can get really lucky and pick up stuff for a penny. Yes, that's an actual penny. Sometimes employees miss a clearance item that they were supposed to pull from the shelves and racks. If you purchase it, it will ring up for a penny. I can't wait for the day this happens to me. It's never happened before, but fingers crossed that it will happen soon. Let's move on to number nine, liquidation products. Liquidated items are those that were initially sold at traditional retails like Macy's and JCPenney in their stores or online. And these are often items that went unsold, their customer returned, their overstocked items. Uh, seasons and styles change and companies need to move these goods. They're unsellable products. They need to move them to make way for new products that will actually sell. So companies will sell off the bulk of the unsold items at a deep discount to liquidation companies because they really need to get rid of them. And these liquidation companies pass on their goods to you, hopefully at a relatively low price. The pros of liquidation companies and products, one, it's cheap inventory. That's the biggest benefit, that you can get items cheap and cheap enough to make a profit when you resell. Number two is that the products come to you. You can order lots online, lots of even hundreds of items, and they will ship directly to you. So technically, you don't even have to leave the house, and you can end up with a lot of new inventory. The third pro is that it saves time. You could buy a lot with 100 pieces of clothing and just have it delivered to your door. Imagine how much time it takes to visit thrift stores and find 100 worthy items to resell. With liquidation lots, you get all of these items at once simply by ordering online. Okay, here are the cons of liquidation companies. The first one, it's a big one. You can't see what you're getting before you purchase. Liquidation lots are cheap in part because they don't provide a detailed list or picture of every item you're receiving. You receive a box with a bunch of items in it and that's it. You could end up with a great lot of resellable items or it has happened you could end up with a bunch of crap. 
it really pays to learn about the liquidation companies you're interested in. Read their reviews, talk to people who have bought goods from them, all of that stuff before you purchase. Number two, the negative or con is the quality and condition of the products. It can be hard to determine what brands of products you'll receive and you don't know their quality or condition. For lots of clothing, you may see a few brands listed, but not all of them. So you don't know if they're high end or not. And you also have to look into whether you're receiving new items or something of lower quality. Often these liquidation lots, because they do have some returns and unsold goods, you may get items that have stains in them with some with holes or missing buttons and things like that. And they may not be worth reselling. Who knows? The third con is shipping costs. Don't forget that the items have to ship to you, which is an additional cost that will likely eat into your profits. Con number four is that liquidation does take time, actually. Once you get your liquidated lot, you have to sort through your items and research their current value. You may have to clean them up to make them sellable before you list them. There is still work to be done to list the items, so it's not like you're <laughs> free of all of that work. Now let's move on to number 10. Number 10 is mystery boxes. Mystery boxes are popular on Poshmark, and this is where you purchase a box without knowing the contents inside, hence it's a mystery. It's a surprise, uh, although they come in a variety of forms. Some people do them pre by price, like you might buy five items for $25 or three items for $30. Some people, they decide to just stuff a box with as much as they can, as long as it remains under five pounds, which is the weight limit for Poshmark's label before having to pay for an upgrade. Some sellers will do things differently. They'll give you all size small or all tops or all bottoms. Some will mix and match sizes and clothing. Some people will only give you popular brands like Free People and Anthropology. The seller will let you know and you can work with him or her to make a custom mystery box for you. Of course, if you're wondering, go ahead and ask questions because you're more likely to get something you like or want, uh, something that's more what you're looking for if you can customize the box. A lot of people like mystery boxes because they're low on inventory and they can't source in other ways. They might not have thrift stores near them. Maybe they're sick or disabled or they're not able to leave the house. Some people can't physically stand shopping for hours on end. And sellers like mystery boxes too because it helps them get rid of their inventory faster. Many sellers have piles of clothing waiting to be listed and it's faster for them to sell their inventory cheap to just get rid of stuff than to take the time to list each item to sell each item individually. So this has the potential to be profitable if you get a good mystery box with items that can be resold for more. The difficulty here, and I think the reputation of some mystery boxes, is that you're getting the stuff that other people couldn't sell. So kind of low quality, maybe damaged goods, whatever. Someone has tried to sell them before and maybe they've been on their Poshmark closets for months but they haven't been able to sell them. So they took them down, put them into a mystery box and sold it off that way. Well, that's not really helpful for you. And it also makes for, you know, not a very good mystery box, but that's why it's good to talk to the person you're gonna buy from first or read their reviews and just try to get an idea of what you, you will get so that you can have a better buying experience. Now I've seen and read a lot about mystery box unboxings. They're a hit or miss and you may have a few misses before you find a good lot. So again, go off of recommendations and ratings from other buyers. If they've had good experiences buying boxes from sellers, you are more likely to get a good box too. And then if you like what you get from that seller, you can just keep purchasing from that person repeatedly and hopefully get a lot of good inventory that way. Okay, this post has ended up being quite long, a lot longer than I expected it would be, and we're only about halfway through. We've just finished number 10. So I think I'm going to split this up into a part one and part two. You've just heard part one of 
places to get clothing and inventory to sell on Poshmark. I will be back soon with part two.